All right, we're good to go. Hello, hello. Cindy's here live with me. Um, everybody else is watching the recording, which is super great. I'm so glad that you're here. We're doing the neck and stress workshop. And I put those two together, you guys, because um, really they go hand in hand because we store so much stress in our neck. I mean, throughout the day, when you have stress, you can kind of tense up, your shoulders tense up. Maybe they don't go that high, but you know, we just kind of stay in a constant state of stress. And I don't know about you guys, but even at night when I wake up, I'll wake up and I'm like still tight in the neck. And I have to really talk myself, like soften my neck and talk to myself, self-soothe myself. And so um, that we have so many requests and I've heard so many complaints about neck discomfort and pain and, and even pain going in down to the shoulder blades, right? And so when we have stress, that does play a toll on our physical body. Absolutely, for sure, 100%. And I'm gonna throw you out some statistics in just a second. So um, for those of you watching the recording, um, or perhaps you don't know me, you just kind of stumbled across this on the website. My name is Erica Irvin. I'm the creator of Modern Yinster and we are a, um, self-management company for women in leadership. And part of that, we use we use a beautiful mix of science, of strategy, accountability, coaching, and some holistic practices. And so um, we are going to incorporate some holistic practices in today to also some mindset to help with the stress. So it's gonna be a beautiful blend of everything. And I'm really excited about this workshop. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out to me. All right. And Cindy, you're on live. If you have any questions, um, you know, just come off mute and ask away because the questions that you probably have or that you have, somebody else that's watching the recording will probably have those same questions. All right. All right. We're going to get started. So you're in a nice, comfortable place. You can sit on the ground. You can sit in a chair, however you want. And um, so we're going to start with kind of going over stress and the role it plays in your body. Like I said, I'm going to show you some pretty interesting statistics. We're going to talk about stress triggers, how to identify them. Um, and then I'm going to show you some exercise and stretches. And we're going to go through those quickly, right? What is happening? Why doesn't the computer do this? So we're going to go through those quickly. And then we've got a beautiful flow for the neck at the very end. So get comfy, guys. Have a seat. If you are sitting, sitting on the ground and it's not comfortable for you, you're going to grab a pillow and stick it underneath your bum bum because what that does is it helps if the hips are curved under because some of us got really tight hips. It helps push the pelvis forward, all right? And it allows that lumbar region of your spine to be more of a natural curve. Okay, so stress and your body. Like I said earlier, it plays a huge role on your health, um, physically, emotionally, and mentally. And um, 70 to 80%, these are some statistics that I've been finding over the years and um, recently, some that I have found just over the past month when preparing for this, um, this type of work. So um, 70 to 80% of all disease is lifestyle related. Yikes. That means that's good, right? Because that means that we have control of that and we can do something about it. So I see a very big positive in that. 75% of all doctor's visits are stress-related ailments. Okay, this is really interesting. When your head is down, no, no let's, start, let's start this. When your head is up, the human head is what? About 12 pounds. When your head is up, it's, there's just no pressure. But as you start to come forward, every 15 degrees you go forward, that's an extra, um, what is it? It's extra weight on the neck. So what they're saying is that by the time your forward angle, right? You're at that full degree forward, looking down at your phone, your head weighs 60 pounds. That's what it feels like to your neck. And so can you imagine like doing that throughout the day or if your computer's not set up right or if you're on your phone a lot and then you walk improperly, you're putting all that extra weight on the neck and back. And so here's what happens when you put all that extra weight 
the back starts to get lazy, the, fore, the shoulders come forward, we start to hunch. And so reason we're doing exercises also in this workshop is because if you are having neck issues, that will help. That will help strengthen the back and open up the anterior part of your body and then help with the posture and help with the, the neck. Um, but here's, here's a caveat, guys. All the stuff that we're going through, it's really fantastic information, but you can't just listen to it and then implement it for a day and then forget about it. You're gonna to have to have some kind of system, some kind of accountability system, some kind of reminder system to continue to stay mindful of this. When we get into the walking portion of this, I will tell you that um, it took two full weeks of walking every day to retrain my, my stride to walk properly. And once I did that, I actually took pain out of my hips. But the point is, it's that mindfulness. Okay, I'm always scared I'm not recording, so I'm going to check again. Does it say I'm recording, Cindy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Y'all, I have done four workshops, and at the end, oh, shit. <laughs> I had to do them all over. Anyways, it's all good. So, um, we, um, and a lot of times, guys, it's not just the shoulders that we're holding tight that causes the neck pain, it's the jaw as well. Like how many of you guys have that TMJ or, oh, it clenches, yeah, yeah. And when that's clenching, guys, you can just start to feel all of that. I mean, just tighten up through the neck, right? I mean, oh, I have one that if you, this exercise coming up, guys, I'm so excited about this one. If you have pain from here, kind of down the middle of your spine, this one is going to help so much, but I'm just, teasing you right now. We'll get there. Okay. So we've got this stress in our life. We've got stressors all around us, but again, we are still in control and you'll see in modern minister that that's one of our values is to know that we are completely in control of our life. Maybe we're not in control of the circumstances, but we are absolutely in control of how we react to those circumstances. And that's one of the things that we value. That's one of the things that we work very hard at um, switching our mindset around um, to the opportunities, to the positivity, to the hope. Um, so stress in itself gets kind of a bad connotation or a negative connotation because that's, we think of stress as, as triggers, right? The things that hurt us. But there's also the good kind of stress. The stress that, it, the stress in our in our lives, that's good, right? It's almost like if you have no walls to scale, then it, you're not really growing. Maybe you are, but you're not moving forward perhaps in the way that you could, right? Um, if there's no little stresses, acute stresses in life, then we don't, we don't build that resilience and how to come back from that. And so that is, a good thing. So there's a good stress and a bad stress. And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, my dad was in a, a four-wheeler accident. Gosh, it's like 15 years now. And he has a traumatic brain injury. He needs 24 seven care. And when that happened, I went into a, um, a place, a state of mind for, for, I mean, he was in the hospital for almost a year, but for that year. And even afterwards, I went into a state of mind of, I don't want any stress in my life. I want to live each moment to the fullest. I will stop every piece of stress that comes into my, I will prevent it, not gonna happen. And what that did is it stopped me from, uh, or prevented me from experiencing that good stress. I wasn't playing my edge. I wasn't putting myself out there. I was staying in my little box and I couldn't figure out why I was stagnant in life. I couldn't figure out why my business was stagnant. And finally, after a lot of work, I realized what I was doing to myself. I was so fearful of stress because I knew how quickly life can be taken from you because of that accident and how quickly things could change that I pulled myself out of all stress and I missed a lot of opportunities. Lesson learned. I don't think though that if that would have happened, I would have been where I am today doing this with you guys. So, um, so moving on, you know, we have, um, 
we, we need to put acute stress on the body as well. And so the word yinster, if y'all aren't familiar, you guys, it's, it's kind of a made up term, but yin is the opposite of yang. It's um, the passive, it's the cold, it's the stillness. And our yang is when we're going, 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 going all day. We're going, we gotta work, we gotta cook, we gotta clean, we gotta go, you know? And, but we need to incorporate that yin into our modern life, thus modern yinster. And, um, and so when we look at yin, it's a special type of stretching. It's not really stretching, it's actually stressing. We're putting acute stress on the soft tissue. So yes, the muscles will get a little stretched, but we, we try to do it in ways where the muscles are more relaxed so we can get into the soft tissue. And um, so that is a different form, right? So once you loosen that soft tissue up, the fascia, the ligaments, the tendons, the cartilage, once you kind of, not even maybe loosen it up, that's not the right word, but just kind of reset it, um, then you allow the muscles to have more, more room to work with, more room to lengthen. And, um, and so that is a good thing. So we'll be putting a little bit of good stress. All right. So I just wanted to do the differences between good stress and bad stress. Cindy, you follow, right? Awesome. <laughs> okay. So if you have a pen and paper, if not, stop the video, go grab a pen and paper. I want to do a little exercise with you real quick. So there's a lot of times that we have stresses in our life. Good. There's a lot of times we have stresses in our life and, um, and maybe we know what they are, but I want you to start being more mindful of the triggers for that stress. So for instance, if you find yourself getting angry or upset or overwhelmed, um, you've got that pinball game of thoughts going on, maybe your heart rate comes up when you're stressed, maybe your shoulders start to hurt, stop and think about what's going on. All right, and I want you to write this down though. I want you to write down um, um, kind of a, in a line down the page, work, home, kids, partner, like different roles in your life. And then to the opposite side, what triggers stress when you think about those? All right, so what, or coworkers, what triggers your stress or anxiety around coworkers, right? So maybe uh, you don't have kids, you wanna use coworkers instead. Um, what about, say you are in the process of, of um, training for a marathon. Does something in there stress you out? Take some time to write out the triggers. And so I'll just kind of give you an example for me with work and colleagues. Um, one of my triggers is, um, follow through. When somebody says they're going to do something and I'm relying on them and then they don't do it. And you'll start to see that there's a pretty strong parallel to the triggers and the way you feel and the stress to your virtues. And often you're starting to feel that way because one of your virtues has been violated or offended. And so for instance, going back to my work example, you're gonna do your own, this is just my example. Going back to my work example, it's a trust thing. Um, one of my biggest virtues is trust. I want people to trust me and I wanna trust them. And I put that same expectation on other people. And that's me pushing my virtues on them. So you see where I'm going with this? You're starting to set up expectations because of what you believe. And then when they trigger you, you're mad at them because you expect them to do what's important to you. So I want you to just make a list. <laughs> we'll scroll right on my fence. I want you to make a list of the things that can cause you stress in life and what those triggers are on the other side. And also make a list of about five of your, of your values. What do you hold in high moral regard? And then start to see if those two 
parallel each other or not, I guess they wouldn't parallel each other, they would straight up intersect. <laughs> the time is good, we're making good time. So um, <clears throat> I would love to know what y'all come up with. So if you're watching the recording, of course, Cindy too is live here with me. I wanna talk to you, I wanna talk to you after this. I wanna connect with you. Um, let's set a 20, 30 minute time to chat, all right? So we can kind of get this straight. And also part of purchasing this workshop was customization. And I wanna help you customize some of the stuff you're gonna to learn today. All right, moving on. Posture, oh my gosh. Dude, as we get older, I can honestly say that my posture has gotten worse. I have to really think about it. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about that, what that looks like. We're gonna talk about it seated, standing, at the workplace, and walking. So you're gonna get a little bit of ergonomic workplace um, goodness in here as well. Starting with seated because I'm seated. <laughs> and you start with easy place. Remember what I said about the pillow? All right, so that pillow is also something that you can use at work in any chair. Sit on the pillow, press, let the hips press forward so your spine can more naturally fall into place because your neck is part of your spine. So yes, this is neck and stress, but it all plays together. You are connected from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet. Actually, it's more than that. You have even your energetic fields around you, which we'll get to in just a little bit. So when you are seated, guys, I'm going to turn this way because I see this, I see this a lot. We want to sit up nice and tall, right? We want to lift the chest, tailbone flails out. But what I want you to think about doing is drawing the tailbone down, right? I'm still, my pelvis is still in a good place. It's not curled under. So if you're sitting on that pillow and you end up going here, then try to draw the, the tailbone down. Those the SI joints right here, draw them down towards the ground, rest them. Allow your spine to have its natural curve. That's what we're working on, it's that beautiful S shape. So instead of lifting the chest tall and creating more of an extension in the spine, relax the shoulders down, relax the hips down, chin is lifted. Um, and a lot of times we kind of protrude forward with the chin and we don't realize we do it. And you're gonna wanna just push back a little bit. I always check if my earlobes are over the shoulders. I got earrings in now, but then you can actually pull your ear down and see where it needs to be, all right? So that's a good way to check the chin tilt and the forward tilt of the, of the head is to pull on the ear, all right? So we've got this nice S curve. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, while we're here, you know what? Just take the shoulders and roll them back. A couple deep breaths in. Oh, yeah. Oh, wonderful. All right, let's move to standing. We're going through this fast, guys. Um, well, because it's a recording and because there's so much to do. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to have to move. The computer a little bit so bear with me so we're doing this on zoom 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 we're gonna do standing and walking now okay hi i can see me i'm just a little bit lower okay so we're starting with standing one thing that we're going to start with the base our foundation i mean and i love starting with the foundation um it's it's just like anything in life right you want to build your roots Build your feet, build your roots strong, right? You don't build a house without building a slab or whatever it is. I'm not built of houses, but I'm a builder of spirit. So pressing the feet into the ground. And um, if the feet naturally turn out, try to turn them in a bit. If you're used to the turnout, then what's gonna happen is that this is, when you turn them in, you're gonna feel knock knee. My husband is a walker like this, and I was too, because I was in ballet for so long. And it, I felt pigeon-toed whenever I started to just take my feet forward. So we want to align, right? The toes with the knees, the knees 
with your hip points. Your hip points are not your hip flesh. It is these two hip points here. Okay, yeah, can you feel them? And so you kind of just want those to be aligned. Now, if you have lower back issues, you're gonna stand wider. It's just gonna feel better for you and that's okay. So we're standing here and I want you to just gently draw the tailbone down, just like we did when we were seated, right? We still have that natural S curve, but we're not tucking under like this. It's just a gentle draw down just enough to where you feel the belly draw in a little bit and up. Nice. So you have a strong foundation. Your hips are over the feet. Now let's talk about the feet again. Start to rock forward and backwards, forward and backwards, forward and backwards. Now I think about water sloshing in a bowl. It's big, it's going up high, side to side. There you go. And then start to settle. The water just starts to settle and it just doesn't go up as high on the sides. So now you're not going as far forward as far back. And then eventually the water settles at the bottom of the bowl and you're grounded on all four corners of your feet. I'm gonna to turn towards you. We're going to lift the chest just a little, right? Nothing here, right? That's, that's, that's an extension in the spine. Again, we're honoring that S shape in the spine. And then if the shoulders draw back, Pull them forward a little bit. There's actually a slight anterior tilt in the shoulder when you're standing. So I'm not here, right? It's just comfortable, it's just slight. Let the arms be loose. And then begin to lift the chin a little bit. Same principle applies as seated. You're just gonna lift the chin, pull on the ear. If you need to see where the alignment is of the neck, if it's too far forward or back. Yes, awesome. Now allow the palms to just rest to the side. This is kind of funny because um, in yoga teacher training, I would teach them to teach a class with the arms by the side so that they're not crossing their arms or putting them behind their back and try it. Do you know how hard it is to talk to somebody just standing there like this? <laughs> like in proper posture, just standing there. It is hard because you want to rock. You want to, you know, step, hit side to side. You want to put your hands on your hips, but it's really hard. So that'll be a fun little challenge for you. And let's go back to that hip. I, yeah, you got a, you got a question? Yeah. Can you go through the, uh, when you said to lift the chest, but not to, then you said don't, but don't do this. And I wasn't looking. And then, she wasn't looking. And then, you, and then you were talking about the shoulders forward, yes, no. and, but I don't know. Okay. I'll, I'll mute I again, but I, I was having a little trouble. <laughs> Troublemaker, rebel. Lift the chest, right? And then settle it back down so you know that this is not the chest lift that we're looking for. So I like to kind of go big and then settle it into neutral. And then the shoulders, if they're back here, we're actually gonna draw them forward just a little bit. Let me see, Cindy. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. And so your, your spine is honored all the way from the tailbone to the neck. And therefore your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons are also um, in a very neutral, nice, comfortable space. You're not putting that pressure on the head or anything like that. So yeah, did that answer your question, Cindy? Awesome. Okay, so, um, oh, the hip thing, I wanted to show you this. Ah, sassy hips. I always think of like myself when I was 14. Oh my God, no. did I do that? But now my high school friends are watching me. Let me know if I did. Yeah, Cindy's like, <sighs> okay. So this is unequal weight distribution. Anytime you have that and you stay there for a long period of time, you're gonna to start to put pressure on the spots that don't like pressure. Particularly guys, your SI joint, your sacroiliac joint, this is the joints back here. They are not meant to move like this, like this. And when you sass the hips, boom, the SI joint tries. It's not meant to move like that, but it tries. So you wanna to try to keep those SI joints as even as possible. 
If you have SI joint pain and the hip pain, this will actually help with, with that. If you continue, if you improve your posture through this process over weeks and you continue to have issues in the SI joint, then it could very well be uh, your pubic symphysis is not aligned as well. So there's other things that could happen. But again, you're gonna start seeing, if you can really be mindful with this, you're gonna start seeing the neck pain start to dissipate because it's all connected. It's all connected. All right, so I wanna move on to walking real quick. Time check, Erica. Oh, yeah. Okay. When we are walking, we have a tendency again to turn out. But I wanna work on tracking real quick. And what I mean by tracking is walking forward, walking forward with the, the same foundation, right? We did the feet, the knees on top of the ankles, you're stacking. The hips on top of the knees and the feet forward. And when you walk, think about, this is gonna seem really silly. You're gonna draw the foot forward, kind of drag it on the ground a little bit, knee forward and then step. Knee forward and then step. Now, if you have a huge external rotation, maybe you wanna start mindful of just closing the rotation a little bit because I guarantee if you do, you're gonna feel <laughs> like, you know, kind of like your knees and everything are internally rotating towards the midline of your body. Um, but that's actually what we're trying to do in a way because everything sprawls out as you get older. <laughs> we're trying to bring it to the midline of the body in so our foundation is stronger so that we can set up and align properly so that we feel better in our bodies and it's going to become a habit. So yeah, Cindy, I see you practicing. And then forward. Now, are you going to walk in the grocery store like this? No, but this is the one I was telling you I practiced for two weeks and finally I started walking aligned, lined up. Okay. So if you guys have questions with that, let me know, but we need to move on. Cindy, does that feel weird? It feels good for you. Yeah, you've had a lot of body work done though. Yeah. Okay. So let's do real quick sitting, some ergonomic work stuff. Look, I have a handy dandy chair. Take notes. We're going to go through this quick. You're sitting, your computer's in front of you. You want your elbows to be at a 90 degree, and you want the computer to be at eye level or just however, you're, you know, how we talked about the, the neutral neck, the neutral spine, okay? So think about that. And again, if you're sitting a lot, think about taking a pillow to help tilt the hips forward. It's always good, I think, to raise the chair a little bit because when you raise the chair, and this is if you can, right? If your workstation allows for it. But if you can raise the chair, then, you're not putting that pressure on the psoas as much. The psoas, that muscle that connects your upper body to your lower body, it's connected from the femur to the lumbar region of your spine. It doesn't keep that muscle contracted as much and your hips are gonna feel a little bit freer. So you can go dance. All right. <laughs> I have a couple of quick questions there. Yeah. Um, so one is, I remember one time when I was setting up like a standing desk and stuff um, at work at one point, they. The ergonomics person there told me I needed my eyes at the top of the screen and then just mm -hmm. to move them down, which is hard. I find it better, easier for me to be in the center. And yeah. Um, um, so I was wondering about that, what you thought there. And then also the um, with the with the sitting with a chair that's higher. So I find that when I go to conference rooms, there's you know, there's a lot of guys there, so the chairs tend to be taller. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to drop them down. Yeah. But um, but if they're if it's too high, right, like where my feet aren't flat on the floor, I find right. that that causes problems, and I assume that would cause uh, the opposite problems almost. Right? Yeah. I mean, you want yeah, you want your foundation, your feet to be on the floor for sure. Thank you for bringing yeah. that. Up, by the way. But and but as then, far as the top of the screen, the only reason I can think that he said that was because it does keep your chin just lifted slightly, maybe. Okay, and it was a she, but yeah. She, sorry, I don't know why I assumed he, but. Well, because it's, it's a good assumption, but. <laughs> I don't know, you know what they say about assumptions, right? Do you know how many conversations yeah. are so 
messed up because of assumptions I should not have assumed yeah so yeah so yeah okay. uh, maybe that's what he was talking about you know just to lift the chin a little bit but ugh, that, that feels weird yeah it wasn't it, it was more about like the eye fatigue I think oh okay we're actually gonna do some eye exercises in a little bit yeah which I guess if your eyes get fatigued it can also cause tension in the head yes absolutely right. tension in the jaw and the neck yeah cool okay. thank you Cindy thank you thanks of course thank you for asking the questions okay we're good we've covered posture if you want to take a video of yourself walking you're most welcome to and um, send it to me and we can chat and I can help you. I'm not good at sugarcoating, <laughs> but I can help you. <laughs> so I want to move on guys to exercises and stretches. So um, let's just kind of go over the basics. You have four directions that your neck can move. I'm going to move this down a little bit. Your spine, your entire spine, actually. All right. Yes, we're recording. So comfortable seat wherever you are. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just gonna stop. I just know it. And um, all right, so our neck can flex. Downward look, right? That's, that's probably what we do a lot of, right? Because we're on devices, we're, we're looking down, we're reading. And um, your neck can flex at a maximum of 50 degrees. Your neck can extend, lifting up. You have that extension in the neck and your neck can extend for 60, a max of 60 degrees, all right? So now we got lateral side to side movement. That's a 45 degree max. Now, this is not absolute. Everybody's a little different, especially if you have neck issues, okay? So don't take this like too, too my grave. Um, there's always gonna be a little bit of variation between each person. <clears throat> and then we've got rotation and rotate 80 degrees, unless you're kin to an owl. Have you seen an owl's legs before? Oh my God, it just popped in my head. <laughs> you know, the owls can rotate their head and then I just thought of the owl's legs. So yeah, 80 degrees. Now I wanna sit here for a second and just think through this, be mindful of it. Let's flex, let's do all the movements again, flex, and stay here for a moment. You have that still neutral posture. And uh, I want you to see if there's any pinpoint areas of discomfort. If so, keep them in mind. Maybe you want to draw a little net on your paper and you can mark it. I might do that for the workbook for this. And then look up. Any areas of, um, in particular, sharp pain, because this is more of a compression. Again, Compression, acute compression is a good thing. All right, bring it down and lateral to the right side. Ooh wee. Lateral to the left side. And let's go to extension or rotation, excuse me. And rotate to the right. Any areas pinging at you? And to the left. Ooh. All right, bring it forward. Open your mouth just a little bit. Relax your jaw. And swirl your tongue around your mouth. Maybe just the top of the mouth too. And take five natural breaths here. Rib cage expand each breath in. Try to feel the back of the rib cage expand as well. Feeling that the that lungs expand like balloons. All right. So possibly you're going to need some pen and paper here. We're going to go through a few exercises. I've got six stretches for us. We are not holding long in these stretches. I'm just showing them you, showing you them quickly because 
And after this, we move into chakras, and then we're going to go into the flow and bass, where we'll implement the stretches for long and hold climbs. And good on time. So the first stretch is um, your, you know, just let's do a lateral stretch first, where the right ear is to the right shoulder, and you're actually holding. All right. Now lift the head up. Take your right arm behind your back. Press the shoulder down, feel the shoulder press down, and then take the head to the left side. So now you're really creating some space in between the shoulder and the neck. If you need to, check a little bit. Lift the chin, take the earlobe towards the ear, like make sure that's aligned. Excuse me, the earlobe towards the shoulder. Like, oh, it is. Good. So you would stay here for about a minute. Try a minute. Not now, later. Now what I want you to do is lift the head up just a little bit and then rotate it slightly towards the ground. So go ahead and rotate it towards, if you're sitting crisscross applesauce, rotate it towards your right knee. So now we're getting into a little bit different of a muscle here. All right, come forward and then lift up and release the arm and we'll switch sides real quick guys. It's, we're just kind of breezing through it for now. And left arm behind. If your left arm can't go behind you guys, that's okay. You can, you can just take it to your lap. You can even walk it out to the side because then you're still getting that same stretch, right? Act like you're like trying to reach and grab something. And then right ear to right shoulder. Check your alignment. Bada bing, bada boom. Head lifts first, then you release the arm. Oh, sorry, we forgot the rotation. Dang it. Go again. Lift up a little bit, because when you add that rotation, you want to know how your neck's going to feel first. Then you can drop the ear again. Mm -hmm. All right. Head forward, then up, then release the arm, and shake it out, guys. Mm. So let's stretch the anterior of the neck, the front of the neck. Ooh, this is, I love this one. So you're actually gonna to wanna to put a hand at the base of the neck, all right? Let's do the hand to the base of the neck on the left side. No, right side, I'm mirroring you guys. And then from there, lift the head up and tilt it to the left. Ooh, you feel that stretch all through here? Muddy stretch. You are still gently pressing down on this area. If it feels like it's burning, it's fascia. All right, head up, remove the hand. Let's go to the other side. So left hand just gently draws down, chin lifts, and stretch. So you're lifting the chin and tilting the head slightly. One side tighter than the other. Okay. And come up. Now you can add this next one to that one we just did or do it by itself. So I'm going to draw down, lift the chin, and then the mouth and jaw is nice and soft, right? I want you to press your chin towards the ceiling. If you cough, that happens. <laughs> Oh yeah. And again, you can press that chin forward when we do the other ones at the angle. So just remember when they, we're at the angle, the hand goes on the opposite side of the way the head is going. So you can get that elongation, the, the drawing. So, you know, the muscle fibers, you're, that's when the stretch occurs. Okay, so um, the next one I have, oh, my favorite one. I love this one. Okay, you have a very, a very useful but pain in the neck muscle 
it can be a pain in the neck, especially when we're looking down a lot. Um, the semi-planus capitis or something like that. And um, what it is, oh my gosh, it's inserted up here in your occipital region. And there's actually two. And then it goes all the way down towards the spine. But it's got, I think it is like fingers. It's got little fingers that connect to the vertebrae. And it goes all the way down to about right here. And maybe right there. And so um, a lot of times when you're, you're like, my neck hurts. Oh my gosh, it's going through my shoulder and in my back. What's going on here? It's that muscle. And there is a very specific way to stretch it. This stretch, guys, saved my neck. I was having such pain. Um, so Cindy, can you give me a thumbs up? Am I close enough to the camera? Okay. So what you're gonna do is, again, that neutral spine, we're not doing this one in the flow later. The reason being is because you don't do it for long, but you do it frequently throughout the day. So you're gonna look forward. Then you're gonna push your chin back. Keep looking forward. Take the other hand on top of the head and draw the head down. And hold for a couple breaths. And release. All right, so I'm gonna do it again on the other side. I did it on the side that helps me the most, but you might need to play with it a little bit. So again, eyes forward, neutral. Gentle press back, right? It's like you're giving yourself a double chin. And then hand comes on top of the head and gently draws down. And release. So again, on that one, do it throughout the day. And if you're having that pain all the way here in that occipital region, um, I'm curious to know as to if that helps. All right. So um, what did I have here? On your shoulders. Oh yeah, I love this one. Okay. So a lot of times we've got that pain in that underneath the scapula area here. Oh, that discomfort. I don't know if you felt that before. I have. So we are going to do a stretch to pinpoint that area. And I love this stretch. I don't know if I've done it seated before. So I'm going to try it seated first. We're going to unlock the fingers, draw the shoulders forward. Notice we're not doing a whole lot of stretching drawing forward because again, we're trying to pull back and get out of the, the lazy shoulder feel. So we're drawing forward. Now we're not just gonna draw forward here. You're actually going to dip the left shoulder down and use the left hand to gently pull the right shoulder forward. Make sure you're not coming forward too far, all right? Just draw it forward and you're gonna feel that stretch underneath the scapula. Who was it that was telling me I had some issues here? I gotta think about it. And we'll go to the other side. But this time, you're gonna drop the right shoulder and pull that. Use the left arm as a tool. Excuse me, right arm as a tool to pull the left. All right, come up. Yes. Some big shoulder rolls, guys. Oh, five, four. Three, two, one, and release. Oh, let's take the right arm across. Hey, we've all done this one. Oldie Goldie, right? Oh, and the other one. Try to relax the shoulders when you're doing this. And reset. Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's do the eyes, move on to the exercises real quick. And then we're moving on to the flow. So I'm going to do this really, really quick, guys. But I, I want you to practice it, not at the grocery store or a bank or anything like that, because you might get the cops called on you. <laughs> what, what we're going to do is we're going to exercise the eyes. All right. And so we're going to go in all angles. I want you to look up towards the eyebrows, the middle of the eyebrows. Right. Try to keep. You can lift the chin, but try to keep the head forward, actually. I mean, naturally, the chin just lifts, but and you're just, it's just the eyes. You can feel the muscles of the eyes working. Our eyes get so fatigued throughout the day. Now, 
the outside corner of the eyebrow, the right eyebrow, any eyebrow. Now look down diagonal. Straight down. Other diagonal down. And middle out, I think a cuckoo clock here. And diagonal up. Oh. And forward again, close your eyes, just let them rest. Open them and you can even go fast, right and left, right and left, go up. It's like an arch, a rainbow. <laughs> You see why you don't do this at the grocery store? I think I did this as a kid as a lot too. And down, right and left, like a bowl. And that's all you need. <laughs> Tell you, do it a couple times a day. It feels great. It feels great because you guys, this causes tension and stress in the jaw and the neck and the shoulders. Yeah. I know, right? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Yes. And in fact, that's where we're going next, Cindy, with the exercises, is you can do resistance that way with your jaw, right? Push, push to one side, put resistance on it, and then try to push against the hand. Other side, push against the hand. And we're going to do that with the neck. So gently press the neck back, push forward. You're gonna feel the anterior muscles engage. And that's what we want. Oh, about 30 seconds. All right, let's go to the left and the hand cups the forehead and push up on the hand. Good. Y'all are shaking because my head's clean. And then hand down here, push down. So you see what we're doing? We're just kind of strengthening the neck muscles. I don't even think 30 seconds. You don't need to do it 30 seconds. We'll just do it 15. And we've got the other side. So right ear down, left hand here, press up on the hand. And switch. Now we're going to press down and make sure, guys, your hand is at a comfortable space and it's fully on the head. You know, with the fingers there, right? It just isn't that comfortable. Okay. Keep the jaw relaxed. And come up. So what do we have left? Back. Yeah, take the head back. Try to press it forward. Did we do this one already? No. And take the head forward, hand behind your head, and try to lift the head up. For this one, I feel like my bicep's getting more of a workout than my head, but okay. And come up neutral neck, just like we discussed earlier, arms out, scapular retractions, guys. Um, Oh man, I think I've sat like this for too long. I'm gonna come back here. Quick question. Yeah, what's that um, you were doing the side ones. You said push. So so there's obviously there's pushing up with the hand and down with the head. But did you also were you also doing pushing down somehow with the hand? When we were pushing down with the head. Right. That was yeah, it seemed like you were talking about doing something opposite of that too. So Maybe. if I said that, what I what I meant was they're just pressing against each other, right? Yeah, yeah. You meant the head down, right? And yes, yes. So you've got like one pressing down, one up, and then right. one down and one up. Yeah. Oh, so that there is a there is pushing down with the hand and up with the head. Yes and then pushing 
the opposite. <laughs> you know, we talked about the way the spine goes. And we didn't, yeah. we're not going to do rotation like that, but flexation, extension, lateral movement. And you want to get all directions just engaged. So if you're going here. You're yeah, going I get it now. Okay, up on the head. <laughs> For some reason, yeah, it's a hand placement thing, right? So if you have your hand up here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, here. <laughs> In here. Yeah. But then you're working the other side when you do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We just solved all the problems of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so your scapulas, guys, are your shoulders. Um, and a lot of times, if you know, in the inner circle and, and the vault that we have, you're going to be talking about shoulders. And I'm talking about the scapulas, I'm not, I'm not talking about this stuff, I'm talking about back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna strengthen them a little bit and you're gonna draw the scapulas together. So I'm gonna turn around and the arms are just kind of stay, they don't, they're not real strong, they're just kind of here. But then you just draw the scapulas towards the spine, all right? Strengthening the back area, you're gonna do this 30 seconds and you're gonna take the arms overhead and draw down, draw the scapulas down towards the hips. Keep your neck neutral. That's proper posture. And draw them down. Good. So you're really isolating that area, the scapula area. So, um, so you've got a nice list of stretches. You've got a nice list of exercises. And we are in, if you're watching the replay and you want to use this, as a resource, we are in about minute 56 of the workshop. So you can put that on your notes and then go back and watch it again and go through the exercises with me again. Um, so I want to move on to something else that's really important about the spine. And then we've got a beautiful flow to close out our workshop together. And um, you have a, um, I'll put it this way, you have a very delicate chakra in the throat, all right? And so for those of you who guys aren't familiar with subtle energy, it's energy that you can't see, <clears throat> but you can feel it. And the chakras are a system that runs from the crown of your head down to the sacral area. And, um, and so basically I think of the chakras as transformers of energy. And they're kind of cylinders going forward and backwards, and you've got this energy coming in through the cylinders, right? And we've got it in the throat, that super delicate chakra. And then you have the meridians, which kind of carry that energy all throughout the body. And the meridians are also a subtle energy that, um, but, but that there's a lot of them, <laughs> a lot, a lot of them. And um, the chakras, depending on what culture you have or what culture you practice that you're, uh, or, or learn your chakras from, um, the one that we use is seven. And so um, this, is, this is important. Your spine, guys, is just like the house of your energy for your body. And so you'll see that in the flow that we're going to do, we do a little spine movement, right? We kind of start to, to get the spine a little bit more um, lubricated. It's not the word, but supple. And um, we... Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick in particular. I'm trying not to get too far off of what we're doing here. I love this stuff. I could talk about it for hours. So down, Erica. And so these, this area right here is your throat chakra. This throat chakra is um, for uh, responsible for, helps us become inspired. It helps with creativity and communication. And go, moving into stress from our outside world, into our body, into our chakras. If we have that stress from the outside world affecting our shoulders, <clears throat> there's a good chance it's going to start affecting our communication and our speech. So if you notice, like these are again, some little nuances to pay attention to. If you notice that when you get stressed, you start to stutter or <clears throat> you um, start to lose 
there's something that's that's kind of feels like it's disconnected from the head to the mouth, right? You lose your words. Um, a lot of that does have to do with stress and holding that tension in the shoulders. And so there's a great parallel. And now more than ever, there's pain in the neck. So many people are having pain in the neck. Right now in our world, there's a huge communication breakdown. I'm just kind of, I'm just saying, there's a huge communication breakdown. And so that is not what I advertised about this workshop, but I wanted to put it out there so that you can keep your eye on that because the more and more our communication breaks down, um, the more and more, you know, the stress is up and it's just a big cycle. So you guys, we really have to take care of our bodies. We have to start understanding where our triggers from stress are coming from so that we can start to live more peaceful. We can be at more peace with ourselves and therefore other people. When you understand why you're reacting to somebody the way you are and you understand and you're, you, you kind of realize, oh my gosh, they didn't offend me. I let them offend me. Um, then everything switches. You change that perspective a little bit. And we can only do that one person at a time. Um, and it's not something that you can do for somebody else. For me, the only thing I can do is bring it to y'all's attention. And you take and run with it what you will. All right. So um, take care of your chakra. And um, I'd like to move on to the flow. And the flow is just a sequence of stretches that we're going to do together. Let's take a break for about a minute or so. Uh, no, 30 seconds. So that, because if y'all need a break, you can just push pause, right? It's just me and Cindy here, buddy. And Cindy don't need no break. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my water and my phone for my stopwatch when we do this. And we're going to get started. So uh, make sure you are on the ground for this one. Actually, I do need a really quick break. <laughs> yes. I'll be back in like a minute. Oh, go take your break. Guys, oh. I know I went through stuff fast, but again, that is one huge advantage of having a recording, right? And then um, you have access to me. Please ask questions. I want to help you. This is stuff that... Um, I go in more detail with private clients and, and frankly, like more of the work that Modern Minister is doing right now is uh, mind body, it is leadership work, it's um, self-management, um, communication. And, um, and so, yeah, I just, um, I, don't, I don't do a whole lot of this kind of stuff anymore and it's so important. And so I just wanted to bring it to you. And of course I'm continually learning with it and discovering new things and you'll see that as you're moving through um, some of these exercises you're going to discover different things about your body because you're going to be really mindful of it so um, yeah that's it's just a really really cool thing so the flow that we're going to do guys we're going to start seated <clears throat> it is very gentle all right and i love it so if you want to grab your pillow sit on your pillow we're going to start with a breath. Feel free to close your eyes if you want. Remember the soft, neutral posture. Open the jaw. Maybe move the jaw around. Remind yourself to relax it. Let the shoulders and the hips become heavy on your mat. For those of you who do vocal practices or <clears throat> you are curious about that, a sound that you would want to make to help clear this is the ooh sound. You kind of take your lips in a small circle. You go ooh. It's a little higher than that. Ooh. All right. So if you want to do that, that really starts that vibration and, and helps relax the neck. And focus on your breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. If that's too uncomfortable, just in through the nose, out through the mouth.
a gentle breath. You give your breath some gratitude as it connects us with life. Take over 20,000 breaths a day. We're gonna have another just need to yen out, slow down, and recognize it. And we're gonna start with the next stretch from earlier. Let's take our right arm behind the back. This time, you're gonna take your left arm and place it on the opposite side of the head and gently draw the head down. This is where I will start in time. I like it to be even. Some parts of the practice where I'm not speaking much, I'm still with you. Verbal cues, feel free to close your eyes. Drawing the right shoulder down gently. Slowly take the gaze towards the left knee, just at the diagonal. It's up to you if you want to leave your hand on your head. You want to move it back or, you know, play around with it. Focus on the areas you're feeling the most intensity of the stretch. Breathe through those areas. All right, now turn the head forward towards me, release the hand, lift the neck, and release. Yes, we're going straight to the other side. So left hand behind the back, right ear to shoulder, or excuse me, let's do the hand first. And if you want to do the hand, of course. And then draw down. Now, if any of this feels like it's too much, that's your body talking to you, telling you to pull back. If you find that you're hypermobile and this just doesn't feel right, then you're gonna actually use a little bit of pressure to push against the hand so that you start to engage and stretch the muscle at the same time. So now you're protecting insertion points. Relax the shoulders, keep breathing naturally. Turn your gaze downward. All right, release the hand on the head, the arm behind the back, look forward, bring the head up. Yes, yes, yes. Now I just want you to take the head side to side, right and left. Keep going, keep repeating. It comes to neutral and then look to the left side. Relax the shoulders, look to the right side. We're gonna go back and forth.
come forward. I said we weren't going to do this, but I changed my mind. Let's go ahead and double chin. Look forward, double chin. Press the hand gently on the chin. The other hand goes on top of the head, and you tuck the chin. Three, two, one. Look up. Oh, yes. All right, guys, let's move the shoulders around. Take the hands onto the shoulders and big shoulder circles backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold them back, hold them back. Lift the chest, exaggerate this here. Lift the chin and relax. All right. Round. Now let's do that. No, I say grab but pull down on the right side. Lift the chin and look to the diagonal. So if in front of you is what, 12 o'clock? You're gonna look to two o'clock or that goes 10 o'clock. You know what I mean, the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Now remember, if you wanna draw the chin forward, woo! You feel the difference there? I'm sure did. All right, bring the chin back in, head comes up, we'll switch sides. So left hand draws down. Here's the issue kind of by your collarbone. Going down. And then we lift the chin up into the diagonal. Chin out if you like. Shoulders are still relaxed. All right, release. Excellent, you guys. So we're gonna take the legs out nice and wide for a V sit. My wide may look different than your wide. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's just however far out you feel comfortable. If you feel a little stretch in there, uh -huh, yeah, that's, that's gonna happen. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a big side bend. So the whole entire body and the head is going to go over to the right side. So I like to place my, everybody's different. Some people place their hands behind them. For me personally, I place my elbow on my thigh or a pillow because I like to support my head with my fist instead of just letting it hang. But it's a personal preference, all right? So take the hand behind the leg or on the, on the leg, not on the knee though. Left arm comes up and over, yes. Now what we wanna think about here, guys, is relaxing the feet and keeping the left hip on the ground. We're going to take five breaths here, breathing through the rib cage. You have those little muscles that are connected to the rib cage. We're going to breathe through it, not into it, through it. Come on, deep breaths. Three, two, one. Arm up. Head up, we're going straight to the other side. Right arm, yeah, right arm comes up and over. Oh, moaning is allowed, most certainly. Same thing, right hip on the ground. Your right shoulder is relaxed. And we're trying to kind of spiral the bottom left rib cage out towards me a little bit. Remember, chin is lifted just a little bit so it's not coming forward, right? We're trying to get out of that habit of that, that text neck. Breathe through the ribcage, one more deep breath here. Mm, and we come up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, bring the legs back in. Comfortable seat again. I, just, I didn't want to stay in one position for too long. If you're more comfortable in the V-sit, stay there. We're going to do a little rotation. So inhale, take the arms over the head. 
and get the spine nice and long. And as you exhale, rotate over the right leg. So you're rotating from the base of your spine. The base of your spine doesn't rotate as much as your neck. Look over the right shoulder. If you're super tight, the range of motion may be less, but you will get there. You will get there. You'll start to feel better. Yes, you're kind of firing up that spine saying, let's do it, I'm ready. forward. Always getting long before rotation, taking the arms up and exhale over to the left side. And if your neck is super tight, then you're, I mean, you may be just looking to the side, right? Everybody's range of motion is unique to them. Still breathing, even when you're in a your rotation. All right, coming forward. And I just want you to sway side to side. Okay. Let's move on. You can do this seated if you'd like. Otherwise, come with me for cat-cow. Um, if your knees aren't you know, feeling good, your wrists aren't feeling good, then stay seated. And cat-cow is tabletop, so wrists are underneath the shoulders. <clears throat> your stack again, right? We talked about that stacking earlier. The knees are underneath the hips. Go ahead and draw the navel in a little bit on an exhale. Inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly, shoulders draw back chin lifts and exhale tuck the chin press forward belly in tailbone under keep going inhale you're allowing your spine to kind of ripple like a wave exhale inhale exhale keep going i'm gonna Go quiet for a few breaths. And inhale, coming back to neutral. Option, guys, to do a child's pose. Knees out, toes towards each other, hip to heels, walking out the arms. Otherwise, we're going to go into downward facing dog because it is a decompression for the neck. And so from downward facing, it'd be tabletop. You're going to tuck your toes under. Use a little bit of that core strength to help lift you up. Take a deep inhale, exhale, lift up and press back. You can bend the knees. The only thing that we're going to really focus on, guys, I'm not going to focus on form that much. I just want you to hang the head. Shake it, yes or no. And then settle in, look towards the knees. Take a few breaths. We have lots of tutorials in our vault on downward facing dog. Anybody is interested, let me know. All right. And then back to the knees. Guys, if that was really hard for you and you didn't stay there for very long, that's okay going straight into sphinx. So we're putting a compression in the spine and neck. And guys, it is a healthy compression. It is a healthy stress we were talking about. Elbows are under the shoulders. Now, if you feel on your, if you're on your back or your belly and you feel that tension in your lower back, if it feels like a sharp pain or it feels like it's on fire, then you need to come down to crocodile. In fact, yeah, I should do it the other way, but if you, starting crocodile and then work your way up all right 
And then once you're in crocodile for a little bit, if you feel like you can work your way up to Sphinx, go for it. If you're watching this and you have done this posture before, go straight where you need to go. Do you know where you need to go? All right, so in crocodile, your forehead is the forearms. Then if you're ready to come up, elbows underneath the shoulders, palms flat. We are going to lift the chin in this one. So we've got to let your butt muscles relax, let your belly relax. Give us a little timer here. And breathe in and out. Imagine your breath running down the length of your spine. Relax your face, relax your jaw. Breathing and the relaxing, the intentional relaxing is a self-soothing technique. And focus on the breath. Try one point of focus, concentration. Three more breaths. Wonderful. Back down the crocodile, elbows out in front, forehead to forearm. Mm. Once the lower back feels neutral again, slosh the hips from side to side. I say slosh because I didn't think about water in a bowl. Wonderful. All right, you guys, let's come to our backs. We've got one more. Wow. And this is a rotation. So rotations are absolutely beautiful. You may need a pillow or a blanket. And slowly coming to the back, bring knees into your chest. See how that feels on the lower back? That feels okay, rock side to side. All right, let's take our arms to the T, feet on the ground. We are going to do just a good old fashioned rotation, nothing fancy. And walk your feet out from your butt just a little bit. Like you don't want them to be super, super close in. You're gonna take both knees and you're gonna fold them over to the right side. We are gonna to try to leave the left shoulder on the ground. You need to place something underneath that you can. You see how my legs are hanging here? I would wanna put a blanket or pillow underneath my legs. I just, I don't like hanging like that. My, mus my muscles wanna get in, involved too easily because you know, they don't like to hang, they like to work. Now try to relax into this. Another option if you don't have something for the shoulder, place the elbow on the ground and the hand on the body. Now that to really intensify this, you can look over the left arm. So now you're getting a rotation in the neck as well. Timer set.
Another breath or two and then slowly transfer to the other side. Move very slowly in and out of the poses. Keep in mind, you can always press pause. Arms to a T, option to look over the right arm. On this side, I need to put the blanket in between the knees. Every side's different. We're not symmetrical beings. So allow yourself to do what you need to do to be comfortable here. Two more breaths, we'll come back to this line. Again, very slowly. And bringing the arms in. <sighs> Knees to chest. And then knees on the ground again. Palms down, shoulders down, your hands are towards your hips. Bridge pose, inhale, lift the hips. Lift the chin just slightly here. And starting from the upper spine, vertebrae at a time, come down. Bring the knees back into your chest and I want you to get into a little ball. So even if you can, bring the, uh, the chin up. Tight and tight little ball, squeeze, 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 all right? Take a deep breath here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna blossom out and just lay on the ground, tight, tight, tight. And inhale, legs long, arms to the side. That was an exhale. That's okay. We're gonna let the legs lay naturally. Arms to the side, about a foot away from the hip, palms up. That doesn't feel good, guys. I just want you to be comfortable here. So you stay laying down. I'm going to sit up as I guide you through this last Shavasana. Shavasana is corpse pose. And what it symbolizes is um, when you're done with the practice or a meditation or whatever it is, you be still and then you wake up a new person. All right. So I'm going to say a body part, starting with your toes. And I want you to recognize that body part and try to feel that body part without moving it. So take a couple deep breaths here, lift the belly up. Exhale. Do it again, exhale through the mouth, inhale. Exhale. Natural breath. Body heavy on the mat. It's like you're on a beach and your body is imprinting the sand. You're relaxed. And take your attention to your toes. Just notice your toes. And you can tell yourself, I have toes. Tension draws to the hips. Feel your hips heavy on the ground. Tell yourself, I have hips. So thank you, hips. Moving up to the belly button. Feel the breath. Now the belly is moving. As the breath is coming in and expanding the belly. breaths here and notice that. Moving up 
to the span of the shoulders from right to left. So notice the shoulders heavy. Take your attention to the wrist and the fingertips, the whole hand. It's relaxed. You notice your fingers, how the movement. So take your attention to your temples. Soften the eyes behind your eyelids till the temples become soft. Soften the jaw. Begin to take the hand right and left. You can feel the, the firmness of the ground or mat massaging the back of the head a little bit. It's just as if you were looking right or left. Nice and slow movement. Begin to wiggle fingertips and toe tips. Incorporate small movements. Wrist and ankles. Let bring one knee into the chest and then the other. Just draw them in. Next, place your feet on the ground and roll over onto the right shoulder. But I want your right arm to be out long so that your ear is on your bicep, left hand is on the ground. Take a few moments to regroup here. Use that top left hand to draw yourself up to seated again. However's comfortable for you. And we're gonna take the palms or interlock the fingers, palms up, reach up to the ceiling, shrug the shoulders. And then shoulders down, palms to the ceiling. Chin lifts and arms to the sky. Oh, yes, guys, hands to heart center. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through this workshop, this practice. <clears throat> and I hope that you use these tools to help your neck, your body, your mind, everything just connect, be more aligned, and help to get you to where you want to be, wherever that is. All right, thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you for being here live. Um, in yoga, we say namaste at the end of our practices. And what that means is um, it's a salutation and it means the light of me honors the light in you. So with that said, namaste. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Please let me know if you have questions. Um, I am here for you. I want to be a resource for you and help you with this. So please do not hesitate to reach out to me, all right? So I'm gonna stop the recording and I'm going to, Cindy, don't get off in case you've got some questions, I wanna address them, okay? Thanks, guys. Oh, also, I wanted to um, let you guys know, I'm in the recording, that um, if you like what we're doing here and you want more of that accountability um, and more resources, then 
reach out to me because we have our inner circle. I know Cindy is a founding member, but we have our inner circle and um, it's a really fabulous group that incorporates that accountability, um, small behaviors. We look at the big goal, but we break it down. And um, yeah, and, and I'll tell you more if you're interested. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.